Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to do a watercolor landscape experiment. Um, the idea here is going to be kind of picking a um, central viewpoint where we want the eye to go and then working out from there. So that's kind of the concept that I'm going to be working with here. Um, and I'll kind of jump right into it. I wet this uh, quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. It's 100% cotton and it is um, 140 pound cold press. What I'm thinking is that I'm going to pick that area. I'm going to lift the water in that spot just by taking the paper towel there just so that I'm not getting everything bleeding in. And maybe at the end I might put some color in or in the very initial beginning, I'll put some color in, but I kind of want to just gravitate to that spot and build around it. In fact, you could take just the teeniest bit of raw sienna in that spot, and I'll grab just a little bit of Payne's Gray I'll put that in as if it's a water line. So we're just kind of making this up as I go. And um, you know, I like to just come up with different experiments and see what happens with them. Let's say that's our water line back here. That we're going to see through trees and the landscape and everything. And maybe on that far horizon, I'll mix a little bit of light red oxide and ultramarine. I'll have little you know, trees or elements. I might come back just to kind of mess with them some more. But that's kind of what I want to centralize around. And then I want to work out from there. What I'm doing is stretching out the paper. It's uh, buckling as it soaks up the water. So I just need to flatten it out. All right. Okay, raw sienna. I'm going to fill in a lot of this with foliage and uh, trees. I'm going to use it to kind of map out what I want to lead to that spot. I'm going to have trees on either side. We'll have grass or bushes up in front. And that's Hammy who wants to come in. If he meows again, I'll let him in. Yep, okay. Let me pause the camera. So, kind of just planning out how I want to do this. Maybe it might be a stream leading into the painting and it leads out to the water. Maybe it's a path that we have taking place here. We're going to wind up having foreground elements that will come up and block the background as well. Let's grab some ultramarine, just brush that in. And then we'll start getting serious with laying things in. Usually I go for that light red oxide ultramarine mix for my far distant objects, but I already have my far distant object right there. So if I go with that light red oxide ultramarine, and I want to put that color down here, we're going to see how it matches up with it. I may have to warm this up more. So I'm going to grab some burnt sienna into this mix. Okay, so it's kind of just a looking through and we have that passage looking out to the water. We can see the far distant um, shoreline or some ships. So since we are closer right off the bat right here, I'm going to put in some stronger pigments and uh, 
kind of tonal values and start trying to create the illusion of uh, tree trunks and branches back here. Right now I'm just using the hake brush. We'll um, see what else we can use in a moment. I'm not too concerned about the spacing of these back here because I know that I'm going to wind up um, layering uh, quite a bit more on top. I could take that number one rigger and I could play around with it and start, you know, creating little branch effects back here. I could have probably left a second opening in these trees, probably by lifting and uh, preparing that seam. But like I said, this is kind of experimental. I just splattered something right here, but I'm not going to worry too much because I'm going to wind up having branches come out. It's not going to be a perfect opening. And if there's ever something I don't like, I can lift from that area as well. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Okay, so this is the first initial layer. We don't really have to, like I said, worry too much about um, how it's looking since I'm going to build up on top of it. But since we're going to have a lot of foliage, I think it would be beneficial to start playing around with some uh, foliage colors. So I'm going to grab a little bit stronger raw sienna. And I want to play around with the pattern that I'm working with. Areas where they're bunched together and areas where they're apart. Uh, burnt sienna works good for this. Um, lemon yellow, light red oxide, things like that. It's all fun. Don't forget the ground cover and the litter down there. And while I have this light red oxide, I'm going to create a little path that leads out to this view right here. I'm going to grab some Payne's Gray, just kind of out of habit on the edge of paths and the edge of water. I like to put Payne's Gray for the shadow. These areas are going to wind up coming up, so kind of compositional um, framing device. I'll even darken the sides, but I know I'm going to wind up darkening that even more. Okay, so now with um, linear perspective, our next line that's closer to us in general is going to be lower and um, the objects usually be thicker and wider. So I'm just grabbing the number four rigger. This is a silver black velvet. I think it's a mixture of synthetic and natural squirrel, or it might be natural. Um, ultramarine and burnt umber. The reason I mentioned the composition of the brush, I'm thinking that that is why I like it because it seems to hold a lot more water and pigment and the size helps as well for me. And as I put these in place, I'm going to also kind of ground them so that they don't seem to be just floating there. Use more pigment and less water so that you don't get the cauliflower effects. And the interesting thing here, and I'm just making up this composition, is that we could either have the light coming from that or from a completely different area from the side through the trees. And I could kind of just do shadows across this path. I think that's what we'll do, as if it's coming from that region. And think about it, uh, whenever you're doing the lines for a shadow, if you're kind of just throwing them in there and you're making it up, Think in terms of 
kind of like spokes on a wheel, that if the source is here, they're going to radiate out the lines. So if an object is here and catching in the shadow, it's going to be a straight line out. I'll show you. So it's right here. This one's on an angle. This one's going to be less, a little more to the side. Hammy. So I'm kind of just throwing these guys in, um, just grounding them a little bit. They'll come in with foliage and uh, twigs and whatnot. I'm getting loose with um, the color mixture here, as you can probably tell with the excessive ultramarine right there, which um, you could play around with obviously and see what you enjoy i know i usually paint darker moodier stuff so sometimes um you know people like to see more color so I'll toss that in for y'all so here's just um kind of a mishmash of uh branches and twigs and the foliage over it so far, we haven't done any sort of dry off or anything. Raw sienna. I'm going to start covering, bringing the foliage up and over. We have the undergrowth. Burnt sienna. We're not going to get anything crisp here because everything's wet and wet. Um, you do Payne's Gray as well. Just because I like to, like I said earlier, the framing device. And you'll see as this um, is starting to diffuse because it's wet and wet and dry, these guys are all softening and losing some of their attributes. So we don't really have to stress too much about that layer unless um, we were gonna see a lot of it. Now we can move on to our next layer or we could kind of work with our uh, grassland. Why don't we do that? Grabbing some lemon yellow. This is like pure from the tube with Kind of the mix that's on the brush. Let things pop forward some more. Um, let me mix that ultramarine. And that lemon yellow for a little bit of green. bit of variety. I want to get kind of a dark, so let's um, just grab Payne's Gray, kind of a go-to dark. And like I said, it's an imaginary scene, so if it was something that you were working from, you can uh, kind of put more time and effort into uh, the location of these. This is kind of just letting different uh, densities build up. You know, concentrations of yellow, concentrations of the Payne's Gray. Here we got the card. You can use a cut-up credit card. You can use a um, hotel room card, something like that. We could put rock shapes if we want, interspersed. This is using the flatter edge and pulling along. Okay. Now I'm gonna move to my next layer. So like I said, linear perspective, we're gonna move down. Um, and we're gonna have wider objects and the objects might be more um, have larger spaces between them, and there's not going to be as many. 
So now I want to really kind of get dark. Uh, that burnt umber and ultramarine. I'm going to try not to trace over trees that are in the background. That'll give a better sense of depth. That's a fun one. That's kind of popping off. Over here, we're going to help them crown the place. Bring a little dark for its shadow. I'm using the number one uh, four rigger right now. Like I said earlier, it's just um, easy for me to put uh, a large quantity of pigment down. However, I could use the side of the um, hake brush. Um, this is the Ron Ranson hake brush, which helps come to a point easier. And I could get my dark mix. Let me do that. and bring it to a point and go in this fashion. I could also, I'll do another one here to show I can come up sideways and put in a tree in that fashion. There's a lot of different approaches to it. I could take Payne's Gray and feed into the shadow side here. Take raw sienna and throw some light in. So there's a lot of different approaches that you can play with the trees. I'm trying to make them not uh, too stickish. So I could scrape some texture, some light on them. I could come sideways with it. This guy's pretty uh, thick, so let me build them up. Now this layer, I could really play with the growth coming up, the sticks and the twigs. I want to try to not repeat my patterns. Unfortunately, I kind of was down there. After I put these in, I used to emphasize a lot the tonal value of these branches, but I haven't, I feel like we haven't done a tree that really has warranted that, um, that emphasis. So I'll, I'll try to find a way to talk about it here since I haven't talked about it in a while. When you're putting in the branches, this is just kind of what my take on it, is that if you have a mixture of light and dark branches coming off the same tree, it helps uh, create the illusion of depth for it, where the lighter branches will either seem to recede back into the picture plane and the darker ones may come closer, or it may give the idea that one is kind of in shadow and the other one is... Um, not, you know, catching the light. Sorry, just kind of throwing a lot of stuff at you all. Okay. Now, I'm just darkening my corners because, you know, that's just what I like to do. And I'll probably have one or two more close um, 
Yeah, I wanted two more close uh, trees. I might do a dry off for that. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll go completely wet and wet. Some lemon yellow. This is kind of getting dark, so let's try to lighten things up with that. You see a lot of the stuff we did originally in the background is just kind of a faint memory, but I feel it really helps me build everything up. Taking the cards and scratching at the branches. That adds another dimension to it. These ones are scratching kind of wide for me, but helps add movement. And if you don't like it, just come back over it. Grab some burnt umber to switch things up. Okay, so. We've been kind of going at a pretty quick pace. Um, I hope my camera isn't too fuzzy. Let me wipe the lens real quick. I feel really, I really hope it wasn't out of focus the whole time. I'm gonna be pretty bummed. I'm gonna have to check out that out in a moment. Okay, going for dark, dark, for a close tree. Let's uh, let's just do a dry off and we'll see how everything looks. Okay, if you have earbuds on, um, well, I'm gonna pause the camera. All right, so I just did a quick dry off. Um, at this point, I don't think there's really much that needs to be done with this one. Um, it was a very fun experiment. I definitely want to try this type of composition again, and work around based off of a um, background focal point. Definitely can play around and add little um, you know marks and branches and trees and have fun with it. You could probably add people walking down that path. Um, there's a lot of different options with it. So I'm just gonna put a mat over it, see what it looks like, and sign it. Um, as always, you're welcome to follow along with any one of these videos and anything you paint after, when following along with one of these videos, you are more than welcome to sign your name to it and you have my permission to um, sell anything that you do whenever you uh, follow a tutorial. I want you guys to be successful, to have fun. Build your confidence and get a little Ford art supplies. So we'll hold the camera over it for you all to see. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.